I agree with um, the factors he has enumerated. I just want to add the issue of the social dynamics in the two states. They are states that um, are largely inhabited with a complex mix of different ethnic uh, you know, backgrounds. And then of course you can add um, religious too, even though there are just two religions, but those religions have also typically been divided along those ethnic lines. So you have now two divisions um, based on re re their religions and then of course the, the ethnicity. The other factor is also the political dynamics at play. Um, some of the, uh, I would say, social media uh, disinformation, misinformation and propaganda that we're seeing at the moment, imagine from especially Plateau State, is the consequences of what we're seeing. Uh, statements either have been misinterpreted, uh, statements made by uh, certain persons in government, or whether they are misinterpreted or they are real. I'll give you an example. There was a time when the government set up a committee, and then it went viral that there was no Muslim in the committee. That was picked by social media until date. It means it's circulating. The government has come out to dispel that, but it's still a factor. Some people are still capitalizing on it. Uh, recently, uh, there was the meeting at the Office of the National Security Advisor where he invited governors from the northern state. The Plateau State Governor made a statement at that meeting that some persons in the social media have picked and they've put out there. So that's the kind of misinformation, disinformation and propaganda that I'm talking about. Um, also to build on the point around ungoverned spaces, uh, the nature, the topography of those two states is undulating. Uh, the forested parts, the mountainous parts, and then of course it, the coterminous borders that it shares with uh, some states, in the case of Kaduna and Niger as an example, in the case of Plateau State, uh, Bauchi, uh, and then of course the forests that run through there. So all of these are some of the factors. And I think uh, also to um, buttress the point made by the AIG, the inability and again, I say this with all sense of responsibility, the inability of the state, the two states, to harness and understand these ch peculiar challenges and put up a structure, a security structure, especially a criminal justice system that is able to identify um, offenders and then punish those offenders would have prevented uh, what we're seeing at the moment. I mean, the footage of the attack on the state university went viral. These guys came in the daytime. Um, now, the simple uh, response would be the fault of the federal security agencies. But then um, states who have uh, been afflicted with such dynamics, they've, they've been able to come up with model ideas. And I use the, always use the example of Lagos. Lagos has been able to come up with at least a security trust fund that is supporting the federal structure. Now, we haven't seen that. Um, in the case of Kaduna, under Erufai, they started this program of homeland security where every quarter they would release reports. Now, what it did was people didn't realize that it put the federal agencies on their toes because the state government now had um, a, a verifiable means of measuring progress. So it's not that one arm of the federal um, security agencies would come and say we're making progress when the state has its own m m measurement of that progress or not. Unfortunately, we haven't seen a continuation of, of that. So this is not to blame anyone, but to say this is the situation. If you want to see improvement, then you need to admit that you have the kind of peculiarities that we're listing out there. And then what model are you going to put to now address those um, peculiarities? The ch challenge, as it were, at the moment, there is no active model for addressing the peculiarity that, that those states have, have. And, and um, the sad part is um, immediately after the elections, in, if I remember well, in March actually 2023, I, I, I personally went on air and tried to caution that the dynamics that we saw, the negative mobilization that we saw during the lead up to the governorship elections and to an extent the presidential elections, that those, whoever wins that election will spend the major part of his or her, his anyway, there was no her, <laughs> um, the major part of the first few years of his uh, administration to manage the consequences of that negative mobilization. And that's what we're seeing at the moment, sadly.